Hello fellow Rosarians. It is cold, cold, cold. 29 days till spring. I am getting very excited and then also nervous at the same time about everything that I haven't done in the yard. But let's go ahead and talk about something we can take care of today, which is our spring prune. There's a lot of different guidance out there that you're going to receive. A lot of times people will say, when do you do it? You would take care of it in President's Day, Valentine's Day, when the forsythia is blooming, Easter. So let me tell you when I choose to do it. The first thing I do is I look at my calendar. When is the last freeze for my zip code? On a Google search, put that in your zip code and the freeze, and it should take you to the almanac. That'll be a really good judge of when your freeze date is. For me, it's the end of April, which is so crazy to think about that I'm getting a freeze that late. So as I'm planning in the winter when to make time, I back off six to eight weeks from that date. So that would bring me to the beginning of March that I can do my prune. And so that's just a general guide for me. And then when I ultimately decide that it's time to do the prune, what am I looking for? 40 degrees. I need it to be consistently 40 degrees and, and it can dip down into the 30s at night, but for that dormant spray oil to work, it only works between 40 degrees and 90 degrees. So I wanna do it as soon as I hit 40, uh, and I want to make sure that I'm not doing it during a time when it could affect the beneficials. So that's what today is, 40 degrees and very cold. <laughs> so um, now that you know when I'm doing it, let's talk about the supplies. I'm going to pop it up on the screen here. You need, of course, your pruners, your alcohol. I use that pail and I just fill the alcohol into the pail and go ahead and sanitize the pruners. I need my gloves just in case I need to defoliate any leaves, but I have really done a good job making sure that I stay on that through the season. I also need my sealer for the canes. I just wanted to get in the habit of using that every single time I make a fresh cut. And then I also want to have my dormant oil spray and then my spray bottle. So that's everything that we need besides our receptacle. I'm using a pop-up bin to put everything in and then you could also use a leaf blower to help you um, to clear the beds if you're defoliating. So for my rose bushes I'm going to do the same thing throughout every single rose. For me, I don't pick and choose different pruning techniques for each rose. You will find some guidance from those who are showing roses that they have a different way of pruning their rows. Check that out if you're interested. Um, climbing roses will be pruned differently. We're going to leave those long uh, major canes because it takes so long to get that growth you don't want to cut that back but for all of the shrubs in my yard um, they're going to be pruned the same way um, in the event that you have a baby rose that's just a year old and it really doesn't have any more height on it than a foot go ahead and let that one be and don't do anything with it except for look for any damaged diseased broken canes anything smaller than a pencil but don't take down the main height of that shrub just yet the other thing that i want everybody to know is that it, this does not have to be perfect um, don't be too hard on yourself and in the event that um, you don't like the way that you've pruned it, you're going to be given several other opportunities during the season to tweak this to get it the way that you want it. Because every single time this rose blooms, you're going to cut back a third of the height so that you maintain the overall height of the shrub. So in this case, let's just take the height down and you can tweak it in the season later if you need to. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so what you can't see right now um, is from the ground, um, I am thinking about where do I cut these. I use as a measure right here above my thigh. This is about um, two feet up to here. So this is my gauge. I'm actually just using my leg and I will do that for every rose. I've got my um, my pail with my alcohol and my clippers. So the first thing that we do is look at the gauge. Let's pull the whole thing down in height and not look at anything else right now except for uh, the height of this. So I'm clipping everything very quickly. I am not putting a whole lot of thought into this. Now what we're doing that we've got the height down, my alcohol aside, 
Now what you do is you look for anything that is dead. So I'm hoping that you can see this, but there's going to be a definite difference in the way that the canes look if it's dead. So for instance, I'm going to cut right here and bring it close for you. This is a very light brown. Can you see that? Um, so this is dead. Another way to tell if it's alive is you can take your finger and depress it into the skin of the cane and you will see green. Finish taking off everything that is brown wood that I can tell has died through the winter. Okay, so now we are looking for anything where a borer has come in and then in this case a borer tried to come in i'll go ahead and put that up on the screen what you're looking for for borer holes i'm looking at everything else so now that we have taken off everything that is dead let's look for damaged a lot of times i have deer come through and they will snap an entire cane and it'll be just hanging by a thread everything here is fine there's nothing damaged now i'm looking for anything that is diseased diseased would be anything that is very splotchy the cane should be really a nice clean green so i'm going to take off everything and i'm not I am not paying a lot of attention right now to where where I'm cutting them because I just want to get off anything that is splotchy. So now we are looking for anything that is smaller than a pencil because if you think about these canes being able to hold a big uh, bloom, I want strong canes here. So I'm going to go ahead and take off everything as close to the canes as I can if it is not larger than a pencil. Everything here now is larger than a pencil from the view that I've got. And so now you've heard of inward and outward facing bud eyes. So a bud eye is right here uh, where it is going to push out new growth. It will not push out new growth from everywhere that I just clipped. So you just have to look at those bud eyes and say and picture, will this bud eye now start growing in this way? And then don't pick that one you can just move down to the very next one and clip right above it so i'm just going to take a quick look through here and pull down to make sure that i have all of my bud eyes going out away from the rows the center but if i make any kind of i can always come back later and get it again after the first flush Okay, so I've taken out the dead, the diseased, the damaged. So now what we do is we take a step back and look at the whole thing and say, is this the shape that I initially want for the rose? If you picture that rounded shape, um, we're going to go ahead and make the outer uh, canes just a little bit shorter um, than the inner. I'm looking here real quick. We'll leave that one. I'll go ahead and pull this one down. Okay, so that's how I'm gonna leave it. So now we come back. Do we have any crossing canes where it's going to cause damage? I don't have any uh, except for one. Do you see down here? It's resting against this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off this cane. So now I have nothing that's crossing. So let's go ahead and pick up all these canes that dropped into the bed. In my haste, we are going to use the sealer because I just want to get in the habit of using it. There probably aren't any borers out here right now in 40 degree temperatures, but who knows? Why not? It's just going to take a second um, to go ahead and seal these up. I had a real problem with borers this past season. 
am I concerned about the angle of the cut and rain washing off of it and having at an angle? No, that is not something that I have found to be an issue ever in 30 years of gardening. Rain does not, will not rot the cane or cause any issue if I make it completely flat. Okay, have I got every single cut that I made? I think so. Okay guys, we are on the home stretch for this rose. So now what we do is we use our dormant spray and we spray the entire shrub, canes and everything. If this had leaves, you want to defoliate it so that you are taking care of any overwintering bugs and also addressing any disease and fungus that are on the canes. We also come back now and we spray the soil around the rose because bugs will winter in the soil directly below the rose. So now this rose is complete. So thanks so much for joining me today. I hope this video is helpful. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. I'm going to be showing you some beautiful blooms this season.